Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back for a new video, and I really hope that you all enjoyed my cover of the track Death Wish by Architects. If you haven't seen that, there is a direct link to my cover of this song in the description below. You can also find it on the channel. Now, before we get into learning this track together, I want to leave a huge thank you to all the people who support me on Patreon. The names of those individuals are on the screen for you right now, and their support really goes a long way to help me push this channel forward, especially when it comes to lesson videos like this one. With that being said, let's get into learning Death Wish together. So a couple things you're going to need to know about this track for sure is going to be the tempo and the time signature. Those two are constant, so they're not going to change throughout the entire track. The tempo that I have my click set to for this guy is 240 beats per minute, and the time signature is 4-4. Technically, you could drop this track in at 120, and everything would probably still line up. I didn't try it. I just went straight for 240, because I like the extra subdivisions just to have more clicks in my ears. Better keep me in time when I'm playing and performing this track. So for this lesson video, I broke Death Wish up into 13 individual sections. Sections like the intro, first verse, chorus, and so on. I'm going to take you through each one of these sections in the order in which these sections appear in the actual song. I'll first demonstrate each piece at 240 beats per minute, that tempo that I use, and then I'll take you down to 160 beats per minute. This way you can take a closer, slower look at some of the sections and figure out what's really going on if you're having a tough time at the full speed of the song. With all that being said, let's get to playing. So the first section I'm going to take you through is the intro. So the thing about the section that you just learned is this section is probably the toughest part of this entire song. At least it was for me when I was learning the track. I had the most difficulty and spent the most amount of time learning the patterns inside of the intro. But the fortunate thing about what you just learned is that this intro section is going to repeat as other sections in the song as we move our way through. And the cool part is they don't really change a whole lot from section to section that looks the same. So now that you've learned it once, you pretty much have it for the rest of the song. And there's two other pieces that we're really going to learn that are going to be like that. The next piece is going to be the first verse that we're going to go into right now. The verse is going to repeat almost exactly the way that you see it a moment here when I demonstrate it. And then the choruses are the same way. So the thing about this song is on paper it looks really intimidating because of like the intricacies and there's a lot of nuance going on with the ghost notes and these kind of like technical patterns that I just took you through. But once you learn that and then you learn the second and third you pretty much have the whole song done. You just have to memorize the order in which these sections appear. So with all that being said I'm going to take you into the next section that we're going to see repetition of later in the track and that section I just titled the first verse. So here we go with the first verse, perform for you now. Coming off the verse, as I mentioned before going into it, now you've really got the two hardest parts done, the intro and verse one. Now, knowing those two sections, you've pretty much got the rest of the track down. We do have to learn this next section. It is fresh and new. It'll be the chorus, but I don't think this chorus will present as much of a challenge as the first two sections did. And then we're just copy and pasting these sections throughout the rest of the track. So the next section we're going to go into is chorus one. Here's that performed for you right now.
Coming off of chorus one, we're gonna go into post chorus one. Now this will be the first section in which we see the copy and pasting begin. So we're gonna take the intro and we're gonna place it right after chorus one and call it post chorus one. It's basically the same thing as you already learned for the intro. The only difference is the fill taking us out of this section is almost the same, but we're gonna choke some symbols instead of let them ring out. Really though, there's almost no difference from the intro to this post chorus. So let's take a look at it now. Coming off of post chorus one, the next section that we're gonna go into is gonna be the start of the second verse. Now I've broken up the second verse into three individual pieces that we're gonna take a look at. The first two really could have been grouped as one. I'm gonna call them verse 2.1 and verse 2.2. They really could have just been together, verse 2.1, but I did break them up just because of the way it flowed and there's some new concepts here and maybe that'll give you a better chance at learning it. So this section, verse 2.1, is the first of three sections that will make up the second verse, as I already mentioned, and it is in itself a breakdown. So let's take a look at that now. Coming off of verse 2.1, we're gonna go into verse 2.2, which is the second half of the breakdown that occurs inside of the middle of this song sort of thing. And there really isn't a whole lot for me to say about this guy, just because the nature of it's a breakdown, so it's already in a halftime feel, so it's slower, and then I'm gonna slow it down for you. So you really should be able to pick it up fairly quickly. The only part that I will mention, I guess, is just I really enjoyed the last fill in this. I kind of wrote it myself, like it's kind of a variation of what I heard in the track, but I did change it up a little bit. I added some things, and it's just gonna be like keeping ghost notes on the snare while moving your right hand through the toms and a cool flam, a little bit of a hi-hat chick to take us out into what will be section verse 2.3. So without further ado, let's take a look at the second part of verse 2, verse 2.2 right now. Now the next section we come to is the final part of verse two. It'll be verse 2.3 and it's the same as verse one. So we're seeing again another copy and paste. And with that said, let's just get into it.
Coming off of verse 2.3, the final part of verse 2, we're going to move into a brand new section. And this guy that we're going to take on next is just going to be pre-chorus 2. So the thing about pre-chorus 2 is the drums are actually like lo-fied in the recording, so there's no real drums there. Well, there are real drums, of course, but you've got the EQ sort of pushing it down to the bottom of the mix and a lot of reverb just to give it this sort of like big roomy effect in the mix. I chose for the cover, for the sake of, you know, playing the drums and entertaining, I chose to play the drums that I'm hearing there. So you can kind of choose what whether or not you're gonna play these drums or not, but I just lifted them and I added some of my own symbols and some of my own placements for it. It's a very small section though, so there's not a whole lot to learn here. It's just kind of like a sequence of fills. So with all that being said, let's take a look at Pre-Chorus 2 perform right now. Moving along from pre-chorus 2, you guessed it, the next section we're going to be taking a look at, of course, is chorus 2. Chorus 2 is going to be a copy and paste from chorus 1, so not really a whole lot to talk about. Let's just make sure you remember it, and let's get into it now. Coming off of chorus 2, the next section we're going to come to is the start of the bridge. Now we're going to see a copy and paste again here. This section is very reminiscent, well it's basically the same pattern, from the intro and from the section that I referred to earlier as post-chorus 1. The only difference is for those guys, we had accents on the left hand going at times to the hi-hat and up to a crash cymbal. We also were placing our right hand almost entirely on the china cymbal. So for this version of those sections, we're just going to put our right hand on the hi-hat and I'm not going to be doing those cymbal accents. So so arguably, it's just an easier version of those earlier sections we already saw, being the intro and post-chorus 1. So here's the first part of the bridge performed for you now. So coming off of the first part of the bridge, I just labeled it the bridge and the title, but technically it's the first half of the bridge because the second half is dropped out, but we're not going to worry about that because there's no drums there, of course. But the end of that dropout, there's a snare roll. That snare roll, I am going to group into this next section. So the next two sections you're going to kind of see is that brief snare roll taking you into chorus three, and we're just going to refer to it as chorus three. Chorus three is a variation. We now see a new section compared to chorus one and two. This chorus three section is half timed. We've got some ghost notes going on. It's a really, really fun section to nail. I hope that you all enjoy it. Here is Chorus 3 performed for you now.
So moving along from chorus three, we're gonna come to the final section in this song and then you've got it learned. For naming sake, we can call this guy, I guess like chorus B side or chorus three B side or chorus three extension or chorus 3.2, whatever you wanna roll with. It's basically just an extension on the first half of what was chorus three. We're just gonna see some repetition in the pattern, but definitely some new symbol placement. So just pay attention to what's going on there. Uh, we're gonna drop some of the ghost notes that we were performing in chorus three, just make it a little bit of a simpler pattern. And then the very last thing we're gonna do in this section's demonstration is gonna be the very first fill we learned in the song. It's gonna be that fill through the snare, up to the toms, then across to the bell and hi-hat. And that fill is gonna take us out of the song and then we've got it learned. So here is the final section in Death Wish performed for you now. Awesome guys, congratulations. I really hope that you all enjoyed my cover and my lesson breaking down the song Death Wish by Architects. I wanna leave a massive thank you to all the names on the screen right now. These are the incredible individuals who support me on Patreon and really help to make lesson videos like the one you're watching possible. So thank you to my patrons. If you wanna support this channel, you can find a merch link and a Patreon link in the description below. You can also connect with me further on my social media pages. There's links on the screen for you right now. And as well, of course, as always in the description below. If there are certain sections that really tripped you up in this lesson, video and you want to see me break them down in episodes of hands, feet, or what the fill in the future, then make sure to request those sections in the comments below. And I can do my best to try and break down some of them further in those series. Thanks so much again for checking out this video and I will see you guys all very soon with something new.